Welcome to the final of the Magnus Carlsen Grand Tour. Both players in the semi-finals got $40,000. The runner-up will get $80,000 and the winner will get $140,000. Here is the table for day one. Four rapid games were played. 15 minutes each on the clock plus 10 seconds per move. And Nakamura ended up taking the first match. In this video, we're going to have a look at the decisive game. In the middle game, we already have a very exciting position. Carlsen has just played h4. Let's take it from the top. Carlsen has white, Nakamura has black. The game began. d4, knight f6. c4, e6. Knight f3, d5, knight c3. And already a surprise because... Nakamura is known for playing the Queen's Gambit declined. So you might go bishop e7 and after bishop f4 or bishop g5, just going to castle. But he surprises Carlsen today by playing d takes c4. Carlsen goes e4, getting the full center. And one move here is bishop b4. And this is the Vienna. But Nakamura plays a really weird looking move, b5. You may be asking, isn't this knight attacking this pawn? Yes, but black's knight is attacking the center pawn. e5, knight d5, and a knight takes b5. Already it looks like black has made a mistake. But we go knight b6 defending the c4 pawn. a3, a new move. This stops bishop b4 check, but black can now use the b3 square for the knight. A3 is a novelty. In this position, bishop e2 has been played with a normal move like castle. And then later, white even has this funky idea of playing queen d2 and then the queen to f4, then to g4. Not today. So a3, knight c6. Nakamura is going straight for the b3 square. Bishop e3, knight a5, queen c2, a6, kicking the knight away. Bishop e7, rook d1, bishop b7, and bishop e2. This opening looks so ugly to me with the black pieces because black has two double pawns. Black wants to get in c5. This is a useful pawn break. When he gets in c5, then uh, he won't have doubled c pawns anymore. Queen d7, black has two ideas. You can castle, but also controlling the a4 square. h4, a brilliant move by white because maybe there's no need to castle because how does the rook get in the game it doesn't the two bishops are in the way so let's go h4 and find a way to get the rook into the game bishop c6 two ideas we can go to a4 but once the king has castled if it chooses to do so maybe the king can tuck itself away on b7 rook h3 Rook b8, rook g3. How to defend g7? Do we want to go g6? Then it gives white a target. If you play g6, then h5. Also, these squares around the king are a bit weak, so maybe the bishop can go to h6. You can't go rook g8 because the queen will take on h7. So rook g8 is out, and king f8, then you can't castle, so black goes for counterplay. He goes bishop a4, attacking the queen. Knight takes a4. Queen takes a4. So at the moment, white has no time to take the g7 pawn. Rook c1. Now, you don't want to play a move like queen takes a4, because after take, the pawn on b2 is going to fall, and black has a lot of counterplay. Rook takes pawn. Rook takes b2. And we're going to push the c3 pawn, and the a3 pawn is going to drop. So this is no good. That's why after queen takes a4, rook c1 was chosen by Carlsen. Knight b3, Nakamura attacks the rook, and he doesn't move it. He goes rook g7 and exchange sacrifice. Knight takes c1, queen takes c1. So what's Carlsen's idea? Why did he sacrifice? He's found a way to penetrate on the king side, and his structure on the queen side is very solid. The bishop defends the d4 pawn, the queen defends the b2 pawn. 
Now Kuro now plays c3, a pawn sacrifice, trying to gain some activity. Now this is exactly the same as this if you play knight d5, which makes sense. You want to take the bishop on e3. You want to get rid of this strong piece. So c3, I think, at least the same position. Just giving white perhaps a chance to go wrong. You don't want to play b takes c3 because after bishop takes a3, you've got a passed a pawn. Queen takes c3, knight d5, attacking both queen and bishop. Drop it back, take, take. You've got to take back with the pawn, so then the queen defends b2. King f8, rook f4. The rook prepares to swing to f4, and then the knight can go to g5. Trying to attack f7, queen b3, attacking b2, because we've got queen and rook on it, putting pressure here, but it's defended by the queen. Now white comes in with queen takes c7. Queen takes b2, and here Carlson doesn't play the best move, he just goes king f2. But there was a brilliant move here with d5, and white has a huge position here. Now the threat is d6, or d takes e6. So if black takes it, then we go e6, which is incredible. If you play f takes e6, then this is completely lost. We go rook f4 check. The king goes to e8 because it needs to defend the bishop, and now knight e5 is just winning. d7 is mate. Also, this bishop can come to h5. You can't stop both. So if you go queen b7, then bishop h5 is mate. After e6, you might not give white the chance to play knight e5, so you can play f6. But there's a brilliant move here. Pause the video to have a go. What can white play so then this king is no longer defending this bishop? Five seconds. The brilliant move is rook g7. If king takes, queen takes bishop check, king h6. You either go forward or back, but white's next move is the same. You're going to get the knight in the game. So let's say you go king h6. This pawn is defended by the queen. Let's cut off the defense, knight d4. And black is in serious trouble. If rook f8, it should be mate very soon. Maybe knight f5 check and g4 h5. Let's go knight f5 check, king g6 and g4. Take a move out, protect the knight, fret and mate. You can't stop it. If rook g8, let's just finish it off. Where is the mate? h5 check, king g5, queen h6. Yeah, that's amazing. Queen h6 is next. This is guarded by the bishop. The king is safe from any check. So that is an amazing variation. Back to the game, king f2 played by white. Queen b7, queen a5. Rook g8. Swap off rooks. Why not? Black's rook is doing nothing. So Carlson says no here. Rook f4. Queen c6. Queen d2. h6. Queen d3. Two frets. Queen h7 is a big one. And taking the pawn. So black goes rook g7. Stop it. Carlson can't see a way to make progress. So he does queen takes a6. Take, take. Now rook a8 is possible, getting b2, but Nakamura plays a better move. And he's defended so well in this game. Rook b2 check. Bishop e2, you can't move the king or else this rook will take this pawn. So bishop e2, and then bishop takes a3, and black is fine. Black has defended very well. g4, bishop e7, rook e4. This move doesn't do anything. This may be white's first serious error in the game. Rook g8, great move, because after rook f4, king g7, black is trying to activate his rooks. g5, take, and maybe better to take the h-pawn, because after knight takes g5, this knight is so strong, black gets rid of it. Take, take, and now rook h8, great move. If we look at this position, there are two weaknesses in white's position. A pawn on g5 and a pawn on e3. If you can use your two rooks to target them, then you'll be winning this position. Rook h8. 
Y is in trouble. King F3. Rook H3 check. King G4. Notice here you can't go back because Rook H2 check. You can't go King G2 because Rook takes pawn and this bishop is going to drop. That's why White chose to attack the Rook. Uh, notice both pieces are being attacked. King attacks Rook. Rook still attacks Bishop so Black can't take it just yet. He's got to deal with his Rook. And he takes the pawn on e3. Bishop f3, rook d2, going after this. Because there used to be a pawn here, that's gone now. So this is the new target, which is only being defended by that rook. The game is over. King h4, rook d3. It will drop soon. So Carlson pushes, we just take it. Rook f6, rook e3. So now this pawn is gone. This is the new weakness. Looks like Nakamura is just taking all of White's pawns. Rook f5, rook d4 check, king h5, rook b4, e6. Hoping for rook takes e6, then you go bishop takes d5. The game's a lot closer, but no need to do that. You just take with a pawn. And once you do that, you protect your pawn and attack the rook. Rook f6, rook e5, check, king f7, check, king e7, king h6, rook b8. Let's just see the rest. Rook f4, rook f8, offering a trade. And white can't reject it because this bishop behind it is going to drop. The rooks come off. g6, king g8. And white can't promote the pawn. And black's got two of his own pawns. g7, rook e1. And here white resigned. This rook can come behind to check once this bishop isn't here. So if we play on a bit... Bishop h5, trying to get in here, bishop f7 check, it's just too slow, there's no support from the king. So here, if bishop h5 played, a really clean finish would be rook h1, just get it off. King g6, you can just take it, take, and you've got two pawns, so you're going to get two queens. Nakamura wins the only decisive game of day one, and he ends up winning the match. It's 1-0 to Nakamura. If you enjoyed this video, then like it and subscribe to the channel at the same time. Make sure you hit that bell. Then YouTube will let you know when I release my next video.